Lane advised her husband attacked and stole money from her before leaving in a vehicle. Roger dispatch, en route. We get similar calls from this address all the time. If you ask me, those two should make a clean break and never speak to each other again. Hello, ma'am. Are you okay? Do you need an ambulance? No, I'm fine. He slapped me in the face after we got into an argument and took off with some cash we keep at home. What vehicle is he driving? It's a black ETK 800. Dispatch, suspect departed in an ETK 800, black in color. Suspect is a male with short black hair. Do you happen to know the license plate number? It's AD4589. Dispatch, can I get a 1028 on Adam David 4589? That should be the suspect's plate number. Checking. Bye -bye. Okay, ma'am. Units are on the lookout, but we'd like you to come with us until he's located. I have visual contact with the suspect vehicle, headed north from downtown on Stephen Street. If I can get some backup, we can try to block him in. Backup units are ready to assist. I have one in custody. Let's get him to processing and let a judge decide what to do with him. Everybody, today we have a couple of cars to check out for our clients. We have an X5 from 2022, a Mercedes S-Class from 2013, and an Audi A4 from 2018. This looks like a nice auto bazaar. Let's see what the car looks like. We found some minor cosmetic damage to the paint. Nothing too bad, but at this price point, I expect a flawless paint job. Other than that, the car's in great shape with only 15,000 miles on the odometer. Deal done with the X5. Let's head to the S-Class. We should slow down. The fog is getting pretty heavy. Stop! Is everybody okay? Quick, everybody out. First responders reported 20 injuries in this highway pileup caused by heavy fog. Luckily, there were no fatalities. The brand new BMW i7 has arrived! The moment I sat in this car, I knew I had entered a new era of luxurious flagship vehicles. When buying this car, you have the option of a combustion engine or an electric motor. We opted for the electric version. Let's take it for a spin. I immediately noticed the comfortable suspension, and the silence in the cabin is incredible. Let's see how this car handles curves at high speed.
A 27-year-old driver destroyed a brand new BMW i7 while filming a review for his YouTube channel. The driver was protected by the vehicle's safety features, but he was taken to a hospital to be checked out due to the nature of the impact. Be careful out there and be sure to subscribe to BeamNG TV News. I'm glad we finally found time for a guy's night out, Gabe. You said it, Pierre. It's been a rough week. Get home from work and I immediately have to take care of the kids. Tell me about it. I love my kids, but sometimes I just need a break. I can't wait to just chill. I'm gonna fire up the grill as soon as we get out to the cottage. Bro, you're making me hungry. Check out this silence. It's always so loud and busy in the city. No kidding. I'm just letting my brain unwind. You hear that? Sounds like a car engine. Sounds great. I wonder what it is. Whoa! What just happened? Does he need help? He looks fine to me. Looks like more cars are approaching. Oh no! My dad's gonna kill me! Sounds like somebody crashed daddy's car. <laughs> Dude, is he drunk? Oh, for sure. Uh-oh, here comes daddy. You're grounded, young man. Get in the car. We're going home. Well, looks like we've already got a good story to tell. Thank God nobody was hurt. Mom, I'm coming home. Those were the last words a mother heard from her son. A wrecked car was discovered at 2 a.m. with nobody inside. Police are reporting the vehicle belongs to a 20-year-old named Martin who had left a party late last night. He called his mother to tell her he was on his way home, but that was the last thing anybody heard from him. Okay, guys, did we forget anything? Snacks, energy drinks, and some good stuff, too, if you know what I mean. Okay, awesome. If Kate shows up, I'm gonna make a move. Good luck, bro. Dude, I wasn't expecting such a nice place. This party is gonna rock. Well, we better get ready then. Kate, uh, I'm so glad you showed up. Dude, relax. Don't flip out over some girl. Where are you going? Mom, I'm coming home. Those were the last words a mother heard from her son. A wrecked car was discovered at 2 a.m. with nobody inside. Police are reporting the vehicle belongs to a 20-year-old named Martin who had left a party late last night. He called his mother to tell her he was on his way home, but that was the last thing anybody heard from him. Want to know what happened? Subscribe so you won't miss the conclusion in the next episode. Austin was driving his new semi-truck that his boss had given him. He went to a gas station to get some snacks and fill up the gas tank. Meanwhile, a mafia gang was fleeing in a Tahoe in a red Dodge after robbing a bank. They were escaping from the city via the highway.
At that time, pilots Sam and Bob were preparing for takeoff. Austin had just entered the highway when the Mafia vehicles approached him. At the same time, Sam and Bob experienced a massive malfunction as both of their engines caught fire. They began searching for a safe place to make an emergency landing. But the plane was hard to control and they impacted the highway. They hit Austin and the Mafia gang, causing a multi-vehicle pileup. Austin was killed on impact. The crew in the Tahoe was lucky to escape by inches, but the driver of the Red Dodge also died. The crew in the Tahoe was apprehended a few days later. Other drivers were injured, but most had only minor injuries. Cassie was going home at 4 a.m. after a midnight gig. She was feeling tired thanks to her overbooked schedule. Meanwhile, Michael was transporting concrete materials from a warehouse to a construction site a mile away. Cassie fell asleep before entering the intersection that Michael was driving into, and he suddenly T-boned Cassie's vehicle. Multiple bystanders were hit by Cassie's out-of-control car. After the collision, Michael immediately called 911. An ambulance and police arrived in under five minutes. Unfortunately, Cassie died before reaching the hospital. Her family was shocked and heartbroken, as was her boyfriend Luke, who had immediately headed to the hospital. Two pedestrians sustained minor injuries and were later discharged from the hospital. Meanwhile, Michael turned himself into the police and will be held responsible for the needs of Cassie's family as well as three other pedestrians. Harry received a call from his grandmother asking him to pick up some medicine for her. He went to the store and got what she requested. Meanwhile, she was preparing pancakes for him. When he finally reached the street near her house, he had to stop behind a vehicle that was motionless in the middle of the street. He honked at the driver to move, but he refused. The vehicle belonged to a member of the Russian embassy who had no reason to block the road. Harry honked at him a few more times before the embassy member got out of his car and started yelling at him. That's when Harry called the police, and they arrived 30 seconds later. They arrested the embassy member for being under the influence of alcohol. They moved the car, and Harry was finally able to reach his grandmother's house. He delivered her medicine, ate some pancakes, and helped her with a few odd jobs. On his way home, he stopped at a red light. While glancing down at his phone, he was rear-ended by a G-Wagon. The G-Wagon driver fled the scene of the accident. All Harry could remember was that it had a Russian license plate. Police later found the driver and arrested him, and he later admitted he had been instructed to cause the accident during questioning. Frank was helping his father, owner of a construction company, perform some construction work near some mine shafts. That day, his company was repairing part of a highway lane that had a big pothole that had been caused by a massive boulder that had fallen during an extreme weather incident. After five hours, Frank went home. He was driving on the highway when he received a message from his father. He grabbed his phone right away to see what it said, a decision that would suddenly cause a massive pileup.
Isaac woke up in an ambulance. He was lucky to be alive, and thankfully, there were no fatalities in the accident. Julian was driving a cement truck, transporting construction materials for his company, when a bee flew into his cabin and started flying around his head. He started drifting off the road when he hit a rock. The bee ended up in his mouth, causing him to start choking. He hit a couple of oncoming vehicles until he came to a complete stop. By that time, the rock he'd hit was already sliding down the hill toward another road. When it fell, it caused a multi-vehicle failure. Unfortunately, John didn't survive. Other drivers had injuries, but luckily, none were severe enough to require overnight hospital stays. John was removing a wrecked car from an accident scene. After he loaded it onto a flatbed truck, he headed to a yard that stores cars before insurance companies have an opportunity to assess them. Command, was I not supposed to put diesel in my car? The night before, John had been kept up all night long caring for his young son who hadn't been feeling well. While driving, John called his wife to ask about how their son was doing. At the same time, his wife was on her way to a doctor's office with their son. It was a bright, sunny day, the roads were dry, and traffic was moderate. Unfortunately, even in such ideal conditions, John's exhaustion got the best of him. He fell asleep behind the wheel, drove into oncoming lanes, and crashed head-on into a semi-truck. John experienced back pain, but the trucker wasn't injured. John was transported to the hospital to treat some minor superficial injuries. Nicholas was preparing to transport a shipment of gas by rail. When he arrived at his locomotive, he made sure everything was ready before requesting permission to proceed. Meanwhile, Oliver was hauling a load of mixed goods with his semi-truck. His morning had started poorly when he got into an argument with his wife. Nicholas was cleared to leave the station for his trip of about 300 miles. Oliver was busy texting his wife while driving, and he didn't realize he was approaching a railroad crossing. At that time, Nicholas was approaching the same crossing as and his engine was pulling lots of heavy cargo. He engaged the emergency brake, but it wasn't enough to stop him from colliding with Oliver's truck. Lisa was driving in the countryside outside of Furwood. So was Bill, driving his black H-series containing heavy cargo. Lisa was late for an anniversary date with her husband, and she was letting him know she was on her way. Meanwhile, Michael was heading home from his first day at his new job. He was very excited and couldn't wait to tell his wife about it. Lisa and Bill were headed toward the same intersection. When Lisa ran a stop sign, Bill slammed on his brakes in an attempt to avoid an accident, but his vehicle was too heavy, and he T-boned Lisa's vehicle. 
The impact pushed her car into a third, which turned out to be Michael's. Michael was the only one able to call 911. After paramedics responded, they discovered Bill pinned against his dashboard. Lisa was diagnosed with a concussion and a fractured wrist. Alex was headed home from work on the highway at 11 p.m. Traffic was flowing smoothly. After a rough shift, Alex was feeling tired. Suddenly, he heard a report on the radio of a wrong-way driver on the highway. He reached down to turn up the radio volume so he could hear what was being said. When he looked back up at the road, a driver ahead of him aggressively merged to the right. Alex woke up with no memory of what had happened. He had smashed head-on into the wrong way driver before being rear-ended by another driver who had no time to react. Alex survived the accident with minor injuries. Nicole, the driver who'd rear-ended Alex, suffered lacerations and a broken wrist. The wrong way driver, later identified as Nicholas, did not survive. A police investigation revealed that Nicholas had been consuming alcohol shortly before the accident. Antonio had enjoyed a beautiful weekend at the Italian docks in a small but pleasant hotel. He was happy for a chance to relax after a difficult week. Then, on Sunday morning, the wind began gaining strength and rainfall became heavier and heavier. Antonio didn't want to drive home in the rain, so he decided to wait out the bad weather. He'd fallen asleep when, suddenly, an evacuation order awakened him. Floodwaters had begun to rise to dangerous levels. While he packed his things, water was already beginning to cover sections of nearby roads. When Antonio tried to leave in his car, he discovered that most people had already been evacuated on a bus. The winds were getting stronger. Suddenly, he realized a tree had blocked the road. The road was impassable, and he had nowhere else to go. When he turned around to look for another route, he didn't go far before more trees began to fall. Even rocks were falling on the road. The winds were incredibly strong, and the waters continued to rise as Antonio was trapped with no idea what to do. When the water finally reached his car, all traffic on the road came to a stop. Rescue personnel did their best to save anybody they could. After several hours, the winds began decreasing and the floodwaters began to recede. Antonio was fortunate and happy to be alive. Eric was removing wrecked vehicles from a highway one winter morning in the city of Belesco. He'd been enjoying his morning coffee when he received a call about a stalled vehicle. It was around 7 a.m. and traffic was starting to pick up. The stalled vehicle was located on a highway about 10 miles outside the city. Eric located the vehicle and took every appropriate safety measure. Meanwhile, Officer Dan Hill saw what was happening and activated his emergency lighting for increased safety. 
As Eric was finishing loading up the disabled vehicle, a truck driver lost control on the icy road and smashed into Eric's tow truck. Two more vehicles that had been driving behind the semi-truck were also involved in the collision. When paramedics arrived, they began assessing the injuries of the people involved. Eric had been hit by the truck, but he managed to escape any serious injuries. The truck driver had shoulder pain and a few minor scrapes. The other two drivers received medical treatment at the scene for lacerations, and one of their passengers had a headache. One stormy night, the sky was filled with lightning as rain poured down. The wind was blowing strong, but not so strong that it threatened buildings or their rooftops. Unfortunately, it was strong enough to cause weak trees to fall. One tree fell across a road, blocking it completely. At that time, Robert was headed home after a rough shift at a candy factory. He had no idea what was about to happen or how much worse his night was about to get. His headlights weren't able to pierce very far through the thick fog. By the time he saw the fallen tree, it was too late. He collided with it before launching into the air and ending up in the oncoming lane, unable to drive. Suddenly, a fully loaded oncoming semi-truck smashed into Robert's car before another car hit them both from the other direction. The trucker was the only one able to make a 911 call. He turned on his high beams to make it easier for oncoming drivers to see the wreck. That didn't stop another semi-truck from rear-ending him and pushing him off the road. Finally, police and paramedics arrived and secured the area to prevent additional accidents. Robert was in critical condition and was having trouble breathing due to severe chest trauma. He also had terrible neck and back pain with an unknown neck injury. The drivers of the trucks sustained only minor cuts and bruises. The driver of the other car was transported to a hospital but was released just two days later. Marcus and his friends were searching for gold and other precious metals in the desert. The hot sun was directly overhead and bearing down on them. Suddenly, Marcus's metal detector signaled that it had found something below. His friends came over quickly to help him dig. After 30 minutes of digging and clearing away dirt and sand, they begin to uncover the unknown object. After 10 more minutes, they cleared away enough to discover that what they'd uncovered was actually a metal barrel. Unfortunately, it wasn't just any barrel. They immediately notified first responders after realizing that what they found posed a serious risk, both to them and to the surrounding environment. The barrel contained a hazardous chemical substance, and they soon discovered another one. Firefighters carefully loaded the barrels onto a truck. If one of them exploded, the devastation would be massive. Peter drove the truck once it was loaded, along with two police cars in a protective convoy. As the convoy approached its destination, a distracted truck driver suddenly collided with Peter's truck, causing him to lose control. The massive explosion resulted in a concussive shockwave that launched the other thick of seven meters. Sadly, Peter didn't survive the explosion. The police officers and several other drivers were also injured. Andrew was looking for a place to park his semi-truck to take a break. At the same time, Philip was hauling a trailer containing his grandma's old couch. Henriette was on her way to pick up her kids from her mother's house.
Suddenly, Phillips' tire went flat and he pulled over to call roadside assistance. Andrew was feeling very dizzy due to exhaustion before he fell asleep at the wheel. His truck began drifting to one side of the road. Suddenly, he struck Phillips' trailer, sending him into the oncoming lane where he collided head-on with Henriette. Four additional vehicles became involved, making this a seven-vehicle pileup. Luckily, Philip was able to get clear of the wreckage, so he wasn't injured in the chaos. Henriette was in critical conditions with bone fractures in her wrist, neck, and right leg. Andrew's seatbelt did its job, protecting him from any serious injuries. He escaped with only shoulder pain. Other drivers were treated for cuts and bruises at the scene, but most of the vehicles were totaled. Bart was enjoying spending the day with his father. They were both relishing a ride in the Porsche that his father had bought two months prior. Bart asked his father for permission to borrow the Porsche and take his friend for a ride, a friend who was really into cars. His father approved, and after they got home, Bart took the car for another drive. Bart pulled up to his friend's house and he was amazed by the car. At first, Bart drove his father's car carefully so he could get familiar with its handling. This vehicle has 600 horsepower and goes from 0 to 60 in only 2.6 seconds. After a few miles, he began flooring the accelerator while his friend recorded their joyride on his phone. The car reached a speed of 170 miles per hour before Bart lost control. The Porsche collided with multiple vehicles, causing a pileup on the highway. The Porsche was completely destroyed, but thanks to its safety features, the two boys were uninjured. The other involved drivers sustained minor injuries. Bart's father immediately came to the scene to make sure the boys were okay. The police promptly arrested Bart. His father was devastated. Bart was sentenced to five years in prison and was fined $1,000 for reckless driving and vehicular assault. Christian was driving down a highway one night. He was on the phone with his wife, who had called to find out how his business conference had gone. Traffic was light when he suddenly saw someone standing in his lane. He swerved to the left, lost control, and ended up in a ditch. Christian got out of his car to see if the person was okay. The man told Christian that he was looking for something that had fallen off his vehicle, but this was only a ploy. The man was actually a criminal setting a trap. Suddenly, an exhausted truck driver approached and rear-ended the pickup truck, pushing it into the two men. The criminal was killed instantly. Christian was transported to a hospital and the pickup driver wasn't seriously injured. When police responded, they informed Christian that the other man had used this ploy in the past to rob and kill victims. Unfortunately, every time they responded to a crime scene, they had been unable to find any solid leads that would enable them to identify the perpetrator. The police connected nearly a dozen previous incidents to this criminal. 
but this time, a sleepy truck driver had taken care of the problem for them. Richard was headed home from work after being called by his pregnant wife. Shortly after he arrived home, her water broke and they immediately called for an ambulance. Paramedics responded three minutes later to transport her to the hospital. Traffic was heavy, but other drivers yielded to the emergency lights and siren of the ambulance. A couple of hours after safely arriving at the hospital, a healthy and strong baby was delivered. Richard headed home after spending time with his wife and newborn, since he had to leave the country on an international business trip the next day. Winds were strong and rain was pouring, causing many flights to be delayed. Richard's flight was delayed by an hour. Once his flight was able to take off, the weather got worse, but not so bad that a landing was necessary. During the flight, the plane experienced a lot of turbulence. Suddenly, winds became so strong that the plane became uncontrollable. Terrain, it tumbled terrain. from the sky, oh, eventually oh, impacting oh, the oh. ground. Sadly, there were no survivors. Richard's wife was informed by the police after they confirmed that he had been on board. Frank was working as a controller at a construction site. The construction crew was working on a new shopping center, Beam West Shopping. While Frank was enjoying some coffee, a truck driver backed into some boxes, causing them to fall on Frank and one of his colleagues. Other workers immediately called 911 and worked to rescue them until an ambulance arrived. Frank and his colleague were transported to a hospital after sustaining broken legs and neck injuries, as well as additional internal injuries. While Trevor was transporting lumber, he noticed a car meet happening nearby, and some of the cool cars caught his eye. At a nearby construction site, Harry was operating a crane moving heavy loads. Meanwhile, Trevor was distracted by the car meet and didn't notice traffic stopped in front of him. Just before impact, he noticed the traffic and swerved to the right, hit two vehicles waiting at the red light and flew toward the crane. The two vehicles were totaled and one of the drivers was killed instantly. When Trevor's vehicle hit the crane, it came tumbling down with Harry inside. Tragically, he too died in the accident. Fortunately, the crane didn't hit any other vehicles on the way down, except for a bus that was only occupied by the driver at the time. Trevor also died in the accident. The accident caused over a hundred thousand US dollars in damage. Jordan had just purchased a new, modern SUV and he was pleased with his purchase. He took a friend for a ride to show it off to his family and other friends. After spending the day enjoying his new vehicle, he decided to head home to relax. 
Darkness had already fallen as he approached an intersection and stopped at a red light. That's when he decided to enjoy the vehicle's power one more time, flooring the juice pedal. As he accelerated, another vehicle ran a red light and T-boned his SUV at high speed. Fortunately, Jordan's new vehicle had excellent safety ratings and he was well protected. The other driver sustained major injuries, including a broken neck, broken leg, back pain, and bruises. Jordan had some shoulder pain but was otherwise unharmed. His SUV was totaled, but he was able to replace it with a new one once insurance paid for everything. Gabe was driving home on a highway when he spotted someone who looked like they were getting ready to jump off a bridge. He quickly pulled over and called 911. Officer Josh responded to the call and quickly arrived at the person's location on the bridge. While Josh was attempting to talk to him, he jumped. At the same time that a semi-truck was approaching, the person fell directly in front of the oncoming truck. When the driver swerved to the right, he hit Gabe's car with Gabe inside. Officer Josh immediately notified dispatch and requested backup. Unfortunately, neither Gabe nor the jumper survived. Robert worked for a company that transports dangerous and hazardous cargo. On this particular day, it was very hot outside when a fire started in dry grass. Unfortunately, some barrels nearby were filled with explosive material. Robert called 911 to request firefighters while also attempting to extinguish the fire himself. Firefighters arrived in under three minutes. As they arrived, the barrels began exploding. They immediately went to work extinguishing the fire. But the situation was chaotic as barrels continued to explode. Robert was injured by flames and fragmentation from the explosions, but one of the firefighters rescued him and got him to safety. Many nearby vehicles were damaged and the whole property was covered in fragmentation from the barrels. Kenneth's grandmother called him to tell him she'd run out of her heart medication and she'd been without it for over three hours. She was already feeling weak, so Kenneth didn't delay. He rushed to get in his car and headed to the pharmacy. He had started to panic and was exceeding the speed limit without realizing it. Fortunately, he reached the pharmacy and was able to get the medication. On his way to his grandma's house, he didn't notice a stop sign and T-boned another car at high speed. He lost consciousness after the impact and nearby witnesses called 911. The T-boned driver died instantly. Kenneth was transported to a hospital. When he regained consciousness, he immediately told the hospital staff about his grandma's medication. The message was relayed to an ambulance driver and they rushed her heart medication to her house. Fortunately, she survived the ordeal. Kenneth, on the other hand, was sentenced to 10 years in prison.
William was a pilot who was transporting heavy cargo. After completing his pre-flight checklist, he got approval for takeoff. Meanwhile, Donald was driving to another country with his family. After an hour in the air, William felt some strange vibrations from the plane's engine. He looked to his right and saw that the engine was smoking. A second later, it caught fire. He immediately started planning an emergency landing, but there were no airports close enough. Suddenly, another engine caught fire and the plane began losing speed. William began losing control of the plane, but he did his best to make an emergency landing on a road he could see below. Suddenly, he lost control and the plane banked hard to the left. As it impacted the ground, it crushed Donald's vehicle. It then slid along the ground, continuing to hit other vehicles. A huge number of first responders were sent to the scene of the accident. In total, 10 people died. William was among them, having no chance of surviving the impact. William was driving around with his friend in a new car he just bought. As he approached heavy traffic, he was forced to slow down. A distracted Uber driver ran a red light before hitting the brakes, skidding into another car at 20 miles per hour. William and his friends stopped to see if anyone needed help. Unfortunately, a bus coming down the street wasn't able to stop and smashed into William's car at 40 miles per hour. William suffered major injuries and barely survived the accident. The bus driver lost his job and was arrested. Marcus was on a road trip with his girlfriend. They were excited to enjoy a weekend at the docks, listening to the waves and seagulls near the water. It was Friday, and it had been raining all day. They were driving down a road at the base of a hill, leading toward the docks. Suddenly, a rock came loose and began sliding down the hill. It knocked more rocks loose, and soon a rock slide had formed. Rocks began falling on the road, and Marcus slammed on his brakes. Unfortunately, rocks continued falling, and one large boulder landed directly on top of their car. The impact was fatal. Nearby witnesses notified emergency services, but Marcus and his girlfriend couldn't be saved.
In November of 2022, the planet is warm and the weather is crazy. America's west coast was preparing for a heavy snowstorm forecasted for the following day. The storm was predicted to include thunder as well. While Robert was driving to work the next day, snow was falling at a rate of five inches per hour. Suddenly, he found himself stuck in highway traffic after a truck spun out and blocked the road. The snow was falling so fast that cars were getting stuck and couldn't move. Suddenly, Robert was rear-ended by a car that couldn't stop after black ice formed on the road. Cars continued to pile up until police arrived to slow down traffic. Robert was only slightly injured, but he was unable to get out of his trapped car. Rescue units were dispatched to extricate people so they wouldn't succumb to the freezing temperatures. After two hours, they finally reached Robert and were able to free him. Although many people waited for hours, they were all eventually rescued. Samuel was working for Food Elephant, a food delivery service. He was delivering food downtown on his bicycle. Doing this, he was able to earn enough money to rent his own apartment. One morning, he started work earlier than usual. He began making deliveries at 7 a.m. in an effort to earn more money. After four hours, he was feeling pretty tired. Without realizing it, he accidentally ran a red light and was hit by a bus. His bicycle was destroyed and he sustained multiple complex bone fractures. He was in a coma for two months. After waking up, he had to undergo physical therapy in order to fully recover. He's now facing 500,000 US dollars in medical bills, including surgeries and a lengthy hospital stay. Fortunately, most of it is being covered by his insurance provider. David was loading cargo to his truck. Meanwhile, Kate was taking her kids to school. Then she wanted to go shopping at a near grocery store. David had his cargo loaded and he started his long trip to Arizona. At that time, Kate finished her shopping and went home. As she stopped at the red light, David was distracted by his phone and rear-ended vehicles stopped at the red light, including Kate. The emergency units were called immediately by witnesses. Kate was transported to a hospital with critical condition. Her kids were moved to their grandparents because they had no father. He passed away a few years ago. Everyone survived the accident. Police arrested David. Mark was leaving a party. He was driving his blue Audi RS5. He was heading to his girlfriend's home.
They had a FaceTime long around 5 minutes at 11.35 p.m. Mark was approximately 10 minutes away from her home. When suddenly a drunk driver smashed into Mark's car head on. The crash happened at 11.40 p.m. Both drivers passed away. Witness that called 911 spotted the accident at 11.45. Mark's girlfriend was so depressed by this accident, she had to visit a psychologist for three months. After one month of therapy, she told her that she was in first month of pregnancy. She wanted to surprise Mark that evening. Peter was patrolling around a block when he received a call about a police pursuit. He immediately responded to that call joint and the pursuit. The chase was pretty wild as the driver was so aggressive. After 20 minutes in pursuit, the driver tried to overtake a van, but he didn't notice the semi-truck on the oncoming lane and he crashed head-on with the heavy truck. The driver that was fleeing from the cops died instantly. The truck driver had only minor injuries. Jane was driving on the highway in California. Suddenly, her car stalled and she was unable to start it back. She ran out of her car and stand on the side of the road, while Sai was calling cops. that caused the other two vehicles to crash into the abstracted driver, as they had no chance of maneuvering. Jane quickly called an ambulance. Shortly after impact, police officers appeared together with highway maintenance. Jane's car was totaled. The abstracted driver was heavily injured. His name was Rob. Police found out that Rob was texting while he crashed into her car. Subscribe now. Henry was transporting wooden planks with his colleague. At the same time, Freddie was transporting some fragile cargo from Utah to California. Henry wasn't sleeping well that night and got a black bull at the gas station. But one intersection was fatal for them. Henry forgot to check his right on an intersection. Freddy tried to do everything he could, but there was no chance of avoiding the accident. Henry received a heavy head injury and passed away. His colleague had only minor injuries. Freddy was fine, but he was traumatized.
Andrew and Josh were driving their sport cars around the city. They were revving their cars and everything petrol heads do. As they stopped on the red light next to each other, they decided to do a drag race. Suddenly, Josh lost control of his Mustang and hit the street lamp. Andrew quickly called 911. Firefighters had to rescue Josh from his own car. Then he was transported to a hospital with critical conditions where he stayed for a week. Kate was driving her Skoda to a grocery store. As she approached the intersection, she was a witness of a T-bone crash. SUV ran a red light at high speed and T-boned a black sedan. She quickly called 911 and ran out of her car to help the drivers. Unfortunately, driver of the black sedan didn't make it. SUV driver was treated at the hospital and later at court sentenced to 10 years in prison. Jeremy was driving his white SUV from work. When suddenly, he saw a pickup overtaking a semi-truck. The pickup driver tried to swerve back into his line. But he hit the semi-truck and he spun out to a ditch. Jeremy turned around to make sure everyone was okay. He also offered dash cam clip to both of the drivers. But the semi-truck driver told him he had his own dash cam in the car. Everyone was okay. Benjamin was driving on the highway in Italy. He was on the phone with his wife. They were talking about their vacation because they had a flight the next day. Suddenly, traffic slowed down. The semi-truck behind Benjamin didn't have enough time to react as he was heavy and he rear-ended Benjamin's car, pushing him to vehicles in front of him. Fortunately, Benjamin had SUV which saved his life. His wife was scared. Luckily, Benjamin had minor injuries as well as other involved drivers. Benjamin's car was totaled. Lucky for Benjamin, he could go on the vacation anyway. Kyle was driving home from work. His daughter was waiting for him because they wanted to go for ice cream.
Suddenly, he started feeling bad and a second later he fell unconscious. His leg was on the throttle. He flew to the intersection running a red light. After paramedics arrived, he was dead already. Later they found out he had a heart attack. Mark was driving to a party. He drunk alcohol in the car. As he was driving under the influence of alcohol, he hit the barrier, lost control, and flew to oncoming line, almost getting hit by another car. The other driver called 911. Mark was arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol. Alan was heading home in his Gavro Roamer. Traffic was light, so he was driving a bit above the speed limit. He catched up to a slower car. There was a double line, so he decided not to overtake him. Suddenly, a sleepy semi-truck driver went to their line, causing head-on collision. Alan swerved to a ditch, but he hit the car in front of him. Unfortunately, the driver in front of him died on the impact. Truck driver had negative DUI test, but he didn't rest for over 12 hours. He was arrested for killing a civilian and fined for skipping his rest period.
911, what's your emergency?
911, what's your emergency?
nine, clearing for urgent call.
Al 70, Roger. All units, 15 Al 70 is following a Code 37 vehicle, 77 View Regal, two door. He is on the southbound Harbor Freeway from the Hollywood Freeway. It is a two door Buick Regal, 227 Tom Zebra Paul has five suspects inside, known to be armed from a 211 in North Hollywood Division. Thank you. 